Hello, welcome to Up Level Academy's Creative Writing Summer Camp training video. In this video, we're going to go through our methodology to help your child up level their creative writing. So, just to make sure that this is the right training for you, this is for anyone who has a child who wants to up level their creative writing skills without the stress and anxiety that usually goes with it. This is for you if you want your child to be able to elaborate and expand on their ideas. This is for you if you want your child to feel proud of their efforts. This is for you if you have a child preparing for their 11 plus exams. And this is for you if you want expert guidance and support in how to up-level your child's creative writing. Now, imagine if your child was able to receive the creative writing prompt and they were able to approach it with confidence, knowing that they are prepared for success. Imagine if they approach creative writing with less stress and uncertainty so that they were actually enjoying the process. Imagine if they could show, not tell in their writing. And that way then, if they could do all of that, can you imagine how much more time they would have to spend on their hobbies, things that really light them up? for self-care, because they're not wasting time and energy. Can you imagine if they earned the grade they truly desired and they were actually proud of their writing? Can you imagine how uplifting that would be for them? Now, this could be your child. This is an example of a testimonial from one of our students who participated in our creative writing program. And this is what they said. Now I'm going to read from the screen. Scarlett survived the whole 11 plus process, though due to COVID, really not pr pretty. She did amazingly well. She received five offers from Sutton, Notre Dame, Emmanuel, St. John's and Surbiton with two art scholarships from St. John's and Sutton. She has decided to go for St. John's. Thank you so much for all your support and confidence you gave Scarlett, which made the whole process so much smoother and for all the choices we were looking for. So you can see that for this student, it enabled her to achieve her dream schools, her dream schools, because she achieved her dream scores in creative writing and in her other English areas. This is another testimonial from a parent. We commenced tuition with Kelly because my son was preparing for the 11 plus. He had become somewhat demotivated and was not enjoying English in particular. With Kelly's help, he found his passion for English, particularly in creative writing. He enjoyed sessions session so much that he requested extra. My son, son's confidence has grown and he now has a solid foundation in English that will set him up in good steed for secondary school. And that's the beauty of it. If you up level creative writing, it's not just about that. It's so much more. And here's another one. Thanks, Kelly. We've definitely noticed right, his writing has improved. His teacher also commented on the very high standard he's been achieving at school with his creative writing. So I think he's bringing his learning with you into the school environment too. And that's the beauty of this method. It doesn't just coach your child to become dependent on a tutor. It doesn't just coach them through an exam. It enables them, it empowers them to be able to use what they've learned and apply it to more than just the exam so that they are able to truly understand it. After all, if you understand something, you can use that information time and time again in different contexts. So let's make an agreement. I promise in this training video to show you how to support your child in up-leveling their creative writing. But if I do that, you must promise to take action on what I share. Otherwise, you'll be as Einstein stated, 
stuck repeating the same actions, expecting different results, which is insane. So let's think about where you are at the moment or where your child is at with their creative writing. And I'm just gonna move this box so you can see it clearly. So has your child experienced any of the following? Your child mind goes blank every time they begin to write. Your child struggles to elaborate on their ideas so they may end things quite abruptly. Your child struggles to find appropriate words to express themselves. So they know what they want to say, but they actually lack the, the words. They don't have the, the actual vocabulary to, to articulate themselves. Or your child receives feedback, needs to show, not tell. This does not have to be your child's experience of creative writing. You are missing the key four simple steps that I call the 4E reverse engineering method to up-level creative writing. Now, how do I know this? So as I said, my name is Kelly McCord. I'm the founder of Uplevel Academy. I graduated um, from the University of Nottingham with a degree in English studies. I have a decade of teaching experience. I have been blessed and privileged to um, educate in China and in India, Finland, um, Japan, Canada, America. So I have quite uh, a diverse experience with students from literally all around the world. And I'm very familiar with the national curriculum in the UK. I actually worked in schools as well. Um, so I'm very familiar with the national curriculum. I'm also um, intimately. I intimately know the 11 plus exams, um, the GAL, the CEM, and what's called the set exams as well for some schools. So I'm well versed in what's required of your child in basically anywhere in their academic career. Now, I'm gonna talk you through some of the things I've noticed, some of the typical struggles that kids tend to have when trying to improve their creative writing. And you probably have experienced all of these or some of them. So the first thing is relying on an outdated system. How much have our schools in Britain really changed? You can see from these photos, you have the Victorian method of just sitting and listening. And now what's changed? Not much, even though the world around us has. Another outdated thinking is having one-to-one -one tuition over group sessions. Now, logically, it makes sense to have one-to-one -one sessions, right? You think if you have one-to-one -one sessions, then your child will receive you know, full support. They'll have all the time required to help them improve. However, if that were true, how come so many students who engage in one-to-one -one tuition don't succeed? Also, think about how reluctant your child may become when they do one-to-one -one tuition. They might find it boring, dull. They're only having one source of input. Or alternatively, it does work they are able to up-level their creative writing from one-to-one -one tuition. However, you find yourself then stuck in the cycle of requiring a tutor every step of the way because it becomes almost like a safety blanket for them. They lack confidence in themselves because they become reliant on this tutor. Another outdated method might be just relying on ad hoc one-to-one -to -one tuition relying solely on a teacher, or the mindset of, if I study harder and longer, I will get the results. Now, teaching and teachers are an invaluable resource. It's a fantastic job that they do. However, they are having to manage not only teaching your child, but also 
30 other students in that class. On top of that, they have to go to meetings, they have to do paperwork, lesson planning, marking. So there's so much stress put upon them that they might not be able to really meet the needs of your child. And it's not because they don't want to or because they're a bad teacher, it's because they have to move at a pace because they have a set system of the curriculum and they have to get all the kids just through it rather than deepening the understanding of a concept. Equally, if we study harder and longer, it makes sense, right? But quite often, what happens is that our children become burnt out. And in fact, they start to detest studying. So it doesn't work. Another outdated practice is to rely on in-person face-to-face tuition. Now, what are some of the reasons for that? Well, you might prefer face-to-face um, in-person tuition because you feel that it's more dynamic, it's more engaging, um, that your child will pay more attention. However, the drawbacks are that sometimes you might be late for tuition. If you're traveling to have that in-person session, that you might be late, especially because of the increase in traffic on the roads. Equally, if the tutor is going to you, then again, they may be late. Maybe they've got held up with another client, or maybe they got stuck in traffic themselves, or maybe the trains aren't running, or the buses, so they have to cancel. It can also be quite inconvenient. Perhaps your child has planned to have a sleepover or visit a relative, but they have to be somewhere. And currently it's unsafe because of the situation, and it's therefore quite restrictive overall. Now, with online tuition, the great thing is, as long as you have an internet connection and a device, you can set up anywhere, which means it gives you freedom. So for example, if your child was having a sleepover, they could have that and still have their tuition. You don't have to cancel. Equally, you're not dependent on going anywhere. So it means that you have more time as a family together, you're not having to try and beat the traffic to get there and then beat the traffic to return. You can just go straight from school to home and have the session and then have more time together, to have quality time together. That's invaluable. And you can't get that within person. So let me now introduce you to Up Level Academy's Creative Writing Summer Camp the 4E reverse engineer method to up-leveling your child's creative writing. We're going to reverse engineer architect style. The reason why I love this analogy is because architects, they work together. When they are building a, a house, for example, they don't just start getting their tools and building, they collaborate. They come up with a design idea. They then make a plan and then, then use a checklist to make sure that everything has been met so that the design is fully functional, it's aesthetically pleasing, it meets the design spec, and so it's safe as well. So we're gonna take this reverse engineering where we start with the end goal. They don't just you know, start doing it step-by-step step or making list goals, they start with the end, they design it first so they can see it and then they know what steps to take to meet that. And that's what this is about. We're gonna start with the end goal with your child's creative writing and then work backwards so we know which milestones we need to meet in, the, in order to achieve that goal. And what's beautiful about this is that we can also see then when your child is not on track to meet that end goal. And it allows us then to intervene to see well, what extra support is required, what's missing, so that we can get them back on track for their goal. So what's possible then with the Up Level Academy's 4E reverse engine method for your child? Your child understands and knows what's happening. They're not left in the lurch. Your child designs what they want. And this actually gives them the edge over other students because they know exactly what they're aiming for. It gives them a sense of maturity as well, because, you know, in life, it's all about cause and effect. There's consequences to our action and our inaction. 
And it's great for your child to learn that. Your child will have a solid foundation in creative writing, and they will be able to use this beyond the context of the exam. They'll be able to use it in their classroom and beyond that in everyday situations as well. So I know it can transform your life and your child's education. So right now, what I'd like for you to do is make sure you have a pen and paper or a device to make notes on, because we're gonna go through now this uh, methodology step by step. So please make sure if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do so and make sure you have something to write with because you can then take immediate action to support your child and uplevel their creative writing and you can see results today. So the typical advice on how to improve your child's um, ideas for creative writing, the outdated method, read, read, read. If you ask anybody, how can my child improve their creative writing? They will all say they need to read more. Now, if that was true, before we go into that step, if that were true, then how comes so many avid readers are not succeeding in their creative writing? Many do not, even though they love reading. And equally, your child may become despondent and just tired from the sheer volume of what's being asked of them. So instead, we want to encourage you to read smartly. And by that, the first step is explain what they're reading and why they're reading it. So explain the reading. This is what we start with reverse engineering. Start with the end goal. Why are they reading this text? And what are they reading? It, you know, you can look at what genre it is. Is this fiction, nonfiction? Is it a diary? What genre is it? Is it uh, an adventure, a romance, a tragedy? So they're in that mindset because reading is an active process. It requires a lot of concentration, which is why quite often when you've read, you feel a little bit tired and you want your child to engage in it. And why? Why are they reading? If you want to have reading be an asset to your child in terms of up-leveling their creative writing, then you need to pinpoint specific areas that you're going to focus on, not just here's a book, read it, and then expect it to translate to creative writing. No. For example, you might want to explain to them that we're reading this and we're focusing on the imagery or we're reading this and we're going to be focusing on the vocabulary. It helps your child to then focus and they know exactly what's being asked of them. So if your child, if you explain what and why your child is reading, they will read effectively because they have a clear focus. If your child knows what's expected of them, your child will not feel stressed or worried. They know what's being asked. They know that they can ask questions. You know, one of the big sources of uncertainty is the fear of not knowing. So if they know, then it helps to reduce that anxiety. If your child understands the different genres and their purpose, your child will understand how to use them in their own writing because they're going to be able to take note of what's being used. And to give you an example, look at this image. Pause the video again if you need to and write down everything that you see. Write down what you see in this um, image. Did you find these 10 hidden objects in the picture? Now, you might have found one or two, but the chances are you didn't find all 10. And the reason for that is because you weren't primed. You were just looking at it without any clear direction. You weren't explained um, clearly why you were doing it. The purpose of it was to find these 10 hidden objects. You might have been distracted by, for example, this lady. I mean, you know, she's quite prominent. She's got all these dogs. She's listening to something. You might have been uh, drawn to this uh, boy riding a bike with a cat that looks a little bit um, uncertain because of the dog chasing it. You might have been drawn to the tree with the bird and the cat. So there's so many distractions, but if you know exactly what you're looking for, then when you're looking at this picture now, and again, pause it, I'm sure you'll be able to find these 10 hidden objects with greater ease because you know what it is you're looking for. So for example, this pig is, is here. 
And it's the same with reading. If you want reading to be an asset to your child's creative reading, uh, creative writing, then you need to explain what they're reading and why. Another piece of typical advice on how to improve your child's vocabulary for creative writing. The outdated method drills, drills, drills. So the outdated method is learning the rules. So you might learn spelling, grammar, punctuation, synonyms, antonyms. So you just go through all the rules and you repeat it over and over and over. Now, if this was effective, why doesn't everyone, why doesn't every child score a high grade in their creative writing? And the reason it doesn't is because it lacks, it's too rigid, it lacks any flexibility, it lacks the personality. Each child is unique. Some words will resonate more with your child than others, and that is okay. We want them to find their authentic voice, so we want to expose them to a wide repertoire of words. So they may be able, with this outdated method, recall some of uh, the vocabulary and some of the rules, but they won't be able to implement them consistently and appropriately, which is why you might find that you have gone over some spellings and yet they've got it right in the exam, you know, they have their spelling test, and yet they're not using that word accurately or consistently or appropriately in their own writing. And it's just because they may have learned it for that um, drilled test, but they haven't mastered it. So step two is expand your child's vocabulary. If your child builds on their vocabulary, your child will expand on their answers because they will have the language to be specific. If your child knows synonyms, your child will express themselves authentically. As I mentioned, some words will resonate more with your child than others. And that's okay. It helps them to find their voice, which is unique, which is creative in and of itself. If your child is familiar with a wide range of lexis, which means specific fields, language for specific fields, your child will create realistic and relatable images in their writing. So let me give you an example of why the outdated method of just drilling vocabulary doesn't work. So in an exam question, this is from an 11 plus exam paper, what word class is swimming in the sentence? Swimming is my favorite sport. The majority of kids answered swimming is a verb because it is a doing word, it ends in ing. Now the children's responses make sense according to the drills they've done, right? Which means they should have got this answer correct. But the truth is it was wrong. Swimming here, swimming is my favorite sport. The verb swimming, which is what we you know, teach our kids because it ends in ing, it's a doing word, is actually being used as a noun. So can you see how actually learning these drills can be misleading and will help prevent your child from truly mastering their vocabulary? Another typical piece of advice you're given on how to improve your child's writing style for creative writing, the outdated method, learn literary techniques. Learn what a simile is, a metaphor and personification, and then your child's creative writing style will be up-leveled. Again, if that were true, then how come many kids will use a simile, use a metaphor, and it just doesn't sound right for the genre that they're doing. It's not sophisticated. It just doesn't seem to work. And that's because they're missing one of the key aspects of creative writing. And if you start with the end goal in mind, reverse engineer it, you won't do, your child won't do that anymore. And that is step three, the effect on the reader. The whole point of reading is to have an impact on us, the reader either in terms of how we feel or what we think. So if your child practices writing creatively with the reader in mind for different genres and modes, your child will write with greater purpose and panache. If your child practices writing imaginatively for effect, your child will learn to make their experiences and ideas relatable so that it engages the reader. 
if your child practices creative writing, considering their reader, your child will have a deeper understanding of what's been asked of them. So they will be able to apply it to different contexts. So let me give you an example. This is um, quite a, a famous uh, example from the writer of Alice and Wonderland. Um, this is from Lewis Carroll. You might recognize it. So we've got here, beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch, beware the jib jib bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. Now, there are a lot of literary techniques here. We have rhyme, we have imperatives, um, we have adjectives here. But how does it make you feel? Maybe confused, maybe baffled, maybe amused, but overall, it probably, if we're honest, doesn't have a strong impact on you. That's because it's nonsense. It's just words thrown together. And I'm not saying that it's not imaginative, but there's no clear focus. And that's why having the effect of the reader in mind when writing can really help you to, uh, help your child to really connect with them and to think carefully about the vocabulary, the imagery, the literary techniques that they want to use, what literary techniques will actually cause an effect on the reader. So let me give you an example. So this is an actual excerpt from a student. This is before um, using the reverse engineer method of considering the effect they wanted to have on the reader. So the sky above was dark as the heavy rain drew nearer, staring helplessly at the dark clouds gathering in the heavens. I wondered how bad it would be. I looked at the abundant life all around our little jungle hut as the first drops of rain trickled down leaves and landed with a splash on the floor. This is just the start, I thought, as the rain started lashing the floor like a whip. I gazed up at the high canopies as monkeys tried to find shelter, as the rain fell thicker and faster than before. I wondered, as I always did, if the rain would ever end. Now that's a great piece of writing. There's some lovely vocab in there, a great use of simile. But what was the effect on you? Perhaps you felt something, but it's not really well defined. And this is after now. We're going to look at the, the student then rewrote it, considering more carefully the effect they wanted on their reader. Above, the sky grew gloomier as the heavy rain drew nearer, staring helplessly at the dark clouds gathering in the heavens. I wondered how terrible it would be. My eyes drank in the abundant life all around our little jungle hut as the first drops of rain trickled down leaves and landed with a splash on the floor. Desperately, I held on to my customary optimism, but as the rain started lashing the floor like a whip, this was shattered. I gazed up at the high canopies as monkeys tried to find shelter as the rain fell thicker and faster than before. I wondered, as I always did, if the rain would ever end. How did that make you feel? How did that make you think? What was the effect on you? Here, it's much stronger, it's more powerful, and it's because they've carefully put together their sentences. They've carefully used literary techniques for an effect. It's definitely gloomier, more desperate, more foreboding. And it's because of the way in which they've pieced it together. Their use of adverbs, They've really considered the effect they wanted to have, and they use all of the literary knowledge for effect. Now, how to improve creative writing for exams. The outdated method is to do in-class assessments and to do mocks. Now, the problem with that is that it's too late at that point. It's too late. There's nothing your child can do then. They just have to get through it and it can cause great stress and anxiety. So, step four is effective exam checklist. If your child practices writing creatively under exam conditions, your child will learn to think quickly on their feet, or in this case, their seats. 
if your child practices writing imaginatively for an exam, your child will skillfully construct answers that fit the mark schemes. If your child is familiar with exam papers, your child will master exam habits that will set them up in their academic and professional lives. What do surgeons and pilots have in common? No, don't worry, I'm not going off a tangent, just bear with it. Any ideas? They both use a checklist. A surgeon's job and a pilot's job can be very stressful, especially when things go wrong. And yet they both use a checklist. Now, before we look at what is an effective checklist, we're going to look at what makes a bad checklist. So what makes a bad checklist? It's not specific. It lacks clarity. It takes too long to do. It treats it like a to-do list rather than something that you need to action. And it treats the individual as incompetent. It has things on there that really is not necessary. So step four is to have an effective exam checklist. By that, what I mean is this. Do not leave exams, practice exams, until the end. Start now. Introduce them to your child now. Set goals. What would they like to achieve at the end? What would they like to achieve then in three months, a month, two weeks? Help them to learn to plan. They need to form a checklist. Have I planned my answer for creative writing? Manage their time. So again, how are they going to learn to manage their time? What does it look like? You know, what does five minutes feel like? 10 minutes, 15, 30 minutes. How are they going to organize that time so that they can ensure that their creative writing and an exam is done to the best of their ability? Help them to create checklists for their habits. When are they going to practice? When are they going to study? You know, it's not just about forcing your child to do anything. You want them to enjoy learning, to have an attitude of success. So help them to engage in planning their time effectively. And the key is being specific. It's not just, I'm going to, you know, um, write a story. When are you going to write a story? What is the story going to be about? How long are you going to spend on it? Are you going to implement some of the vocabulary that you've been going over? So by being really specific, it will help your child to know whether they've done it and achieved their goal or not. So it has to be measurable. And even key to that, even more key, is it needs to be able to be done in an exam which means that they need a checklist for the exam that we can done very quickly. You know, in aviation, they have to work under pressure. In surgery, they have to work under pressure. And it has to be done very quickly. Time is of the essence. Now, I know what you're thinking. That seems too simple to be true, but it isn't. In aviation, they call it the killer items checklist. And what that means is they only list the, um, the steps required that if they did not do, if they failed to do it, it could lead to catastrophe. They practice in flight simulators. They don't just wait until they have passengers aboard a plane, aboard a plane. They practice. They practice what it would be like. And it only takes 30 seconds to do. They can fit it all on one page and it's clear to read. That's what we need for your child. We need them to have something that they can do in as little as 30 seconds because they are under exam conditions. So they need to make the most of the time. It needs to be clear and focused. And it only needs to include the things that are going to be detrimental to their creative writing if they did not do it. And even in surgery, I'm going to just showcase how important this is. In 2006, the World Health Organization wanted to have a killer items checklist for surgery. And that was because they found that it was necessary. Surgery was becoming more well practiced around the world, regardless of a country's economic or social situation. 
So there was more surgeries being carried out. However, what they found was there were a lot of deaths, avoidable deaths in both developing countries and in developed countries. So having money and technology did not prevent fatalities. So they identified the four killer items and they created a checklist. And then they tried this checklist around the world and they did case studies in countries that were poorer, countries who were very affluent. Um, they tried it in suburban areas, in urban areas, in rural areas, because they wanted to know if this checklist really did make a difference. And the findings were conclusive. They 100% did. It was effective. Everywhere reported lower avoidable death rates, meaning that the checklist helped to save lives. And do you know how they ensured that this checklist was working? Teamwork. Teamwork. This checklist had to be carried out as a team. And the way they did that was, for example, the surgeon who was typically seen as the authoritative figure made all decisions. Now, even an expert in their field can make mistakes. So they wanted to share the responsibility. So the checklist would be actually initiated by a nurse. A nurse would run through the checklist and each person on that surgical team would be responsible for ensuring that everything was ticked off. And that if they noticed any deviation, they were to immediately speak up and speak out. And that is why having online group tuition is fantastic for creative writing, because your child will gain a great team behind them. When your child reads out their work or has their work presented, they will get feedback, constructive feedback from their teammates. Equally, when doing work, they can pair up and work together as a team to create a story. They can then see if they're implementing all the steps correct, correctly. After all, practice makes better. And then in the real exam, they will have that under their belt. They will have all that experience and training so they can feel confident that they know what they're doing. And how, so how does this then relate to your child's creative writing? Well, I briefly touched upon it. We've come up from the, I've come up with the deck from a decade of experience at Up Level Academy, the killer item checklist for creative writing. The common mistakes that are made, not understanding the question, the number of children who misread the question and so go off on a tangent. They don't create a plan. They just start writing and then they start off brilliantly well and then it begins to peter out, which is why they might end it abruptly or they lack cohesion. The structuring is a bit off because they're going from one idea to the next. They don't proofread their work, meaning that there are spelling mistakes that they definitely know but because they've not proofread their work at the end, they're not able to correct it. There's punctuation mistakes. And more importantly, they start to, if they do read it, they forget the end goal. That they're writing this, not just because it's an exam, but there's somebody going to be reading it. What's the genre? What's the effect they want to have on their reader? Now, if they have an exam checklist in mind and when they're allowed to write, they can immediately make a note of it on their exam paper. So as soon as they're told, OK, you can write, they can actually make their checklist to ensure that they tick all the boxes and that they're actually actioning it. Then, for example, they can make sure that they've understood the question how by underlining the key words because of all the exam practice they would have done with an effective checklist in mind, they'll be able to break it down using the knowledge, using that experience. They were able to create a plan, a specific plan that will help guide them for the end goal. At the end, they will proofread their work for 
any mistakes, and then they will up level it for effect. So they'll think, well, what effect, what impact do I want on my reader? Is this the best literary device for that? If not, what could I change it to? So they'll have a clear focus. But do you know what the best part is? This can be tailored to your child. So throughout the program, if there is a common mistake that your child makes, that can be put into the checklist. So then they will start to routinely check to make sure they don't do it. I had this an example with an 11 plus student of mine who was fantastic in terms of coming up with ideas. He was, he was like a generating idea machine. And yet what he often failed to do was basic punctuation. He wouldn't put full stops, he wouldn't put capital letters, and his parents were quite frustrated because he knew how to do it. If you ask them, when do you use a full stop? When do you use a capital letter? He knew it. Equally, he started to master, you know, proofreading his work. So he'd read through his work after, um, at the end of the exam, when he had a few minutes left. But he, he lacked that specific focus. But when he started to have an effective exam checklist and he actually made a note of it, he then actively looked for full stops and capital letters, enabling him to up-level his writing. And it was tailored to him for him. So the key takeaways of the 4E reverse engineer method, explain what and why your child is reading. Expand their vocabulary by focusing on the words so that they can master it. Think about the effect on the reader. Reverse engineers start with the end goal in mind. What impact do you want on them? And then have an exam, an effective exam checklist. So they can note down specifically what it is required of them. And then they can even have on that list things that are specific and tailored to your child. So that way then they know how to rectify it in an exam without feeling flustered or without feeling stressed because they've done it before. It's routine for them. And it takes very little time to do. And Hello, just, to, oh, just to help illustrate how effective this method is, I'm gonna show you some of our other students' feedback from the Creative Writing Reverse Engineer method, from using this method, what they've achieved. So this is Ben, meet Ben. He's going to tell you what he's achieved um, using this reverse engineering method for creative writing. This is Ben and I'm 11 and Kelly has helped me to achieve good marks in all tests. Since I had struggled in English, she has helped me to get two marks off the best score. And I like, um, being tutored by Kelly because she's funny and helps me learn. Meet Lara. Lara, who has also used the reverse engineering method for creative writing and has actually used it beyond just her creative writing. And that's the beauty of it. It's not just for creative writing. It can be applied to other subjects and to other areas in life too. My name is Lara and I'm eight years old. I like Miss Kelly tutoring me because it's fun and she's kind and I like her tutoring me because I understand and it's not that hard when she tutors me. And I mean, I couldn't, you know, that and working with Lara, it's been fantastic seeing um, the transform transformation in her writing. Um, she went from barely putting sentences together to now writing full blown stories that have such a strong effect on the reader. And that's the, the beauty of this method. You know, kids understand it. They don't, they don't feel confident and they actually enjoy the process. Now we're going to meet Leon. Hello, my name's Leon and I'm nine years old. The reason why I started um, 
lessons is because my handwriting and my spelling was really hard. So then when Kelly came and gave me lessons, my handwriting and my spelling was much more better. And um, she's really helped me. And she also makes the lessons really fun. Brilliant. And that's it as well. The more practice they get with their creative writing, it up levels their spelling, their vocabulary, and also their motor skills because they're, they're using um, their techniques in more measured manners. So that, that way then, in a more measured manner, so that way then they are actually practicing their handwriting and it just uplifts them, especially if they have created something that is visually pleasing you know, to the eye, then it fills them with confidence and it gives them a sense of achievement. And this is actually a parent uh, written testimonial here for her daughter, Zara. This is Renetta. So Renetta said, thank you very much for transforming and improving our daughter's life. Now she is a more confident person in school. She is capable of doing her homework on her own in record time. The same with reading. She went from not reading books at all, but now she loves them. Her creative writing has improved unbelievably now as she gets the concepts quickly and enjoys it so much. Best of all is that it all is done in the most caring way possible. Zara engaged and loved Kelly from day one, and there wasn't a single lesson that she didn't enjoy. She smiles and enjoys each session from beginning to end. There are not enough words to express our gratitude for such wonderful work. And this is young Zara. She's a a fantastic um, champ. She's a, a gymnast and she's phenomenal there. But this is the thing, the 4E reverse engineer method does transform lives. It gives your child confidence because they know what they're doing. They have a great plan and they have the end goal. So they are deconstructing it. And it has a knock on effect on other areas of their life as well. So here, because they were using um, the effective reading strategy the, the, where we explained what they were reading and why in only small snippets, it actually gets them to enjoy the process even more so. And so they start to naturally start to gravitate towards reading. So remember the agreement at the start of this training video. At the start, I promise to show you the exact 4E reverse engineering method to up-leveling your child's creative writing that we will use in our creative writing summer camp. And you promised to take action on it. So you have a choice now. The two options, one, you can take this information. You've written it down, I hope, if you got the pen and device ready to make notes. And you can try and implement this in, on your own. And truthfully, you may succeed, but you may fail. Is it worth leaving your child's learning to chance? Alternatively, you don't have to you know, feel uncertain about it. You can empower your child in up-leveling their creative writing so that your child can be proud of their grades. Your child can pass their exams with less stress. They can feel greater uh, confidence and can transform their lives. And I wanted to show you this. These three people, we have Jack Ma, Beyonce, and Michael Jordan. Three very different people. What, what do they have in common? All three can be considered successful and can be considered experts in their field. But do you know what? They have not got to where they are today without a guide, without a coach, without a team. Jack Ma, who is the founder of Alibaba, has often stated that without his team, he wouldn't be where he is today. Beyonce speaks of her singing coach. She had expert guidance. And Michael Jordan, he never just turned up on the court and became one of the best basketball players. 
if not the best. He had a coach, he trained. So let's get a tailored learning plan for your child today to see if I can help your child up-level their creative writing. Let's book a call. We will delve deep into the four E's and look at how they can work for you and your child so you know where your focus needs to go so you're not wasting any time. And if I'm positive, I can help your child up-level their creative writing. I may invite them to participate in our creative writing summer camp. So click the button below to book your call today and let's up-level your child's creative writing so that they can enjoy the experience, feel more confident and just have fun.